Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating a warped geometric pattern in Illustrator. Before I start the video, let me tell you where you can find additional Illustrator training of mine. I have a series of courses at udemy.com and in the description below are coupon links for all of those courses. My coupon prices are always at least as good as anything that Udemy can offer and often they're even better. I also have classes at Skillshare and again a coupon in the description below includes an offer at least as good as the current Skillshare offer and generally mine is better. Sign up for Skillshare and you'll get access to thousands of classes there including over 200 of mine. So let's swing back to Illustrator and let's have a look at what we're going to do. A subscriber of mine, Ali, sent me this image and it's of a polo shirt and he wanted to know how you could create a pattern somewhat similar to this. And so that's what we're going to look at today. I have a brand new document already created. You can make your document however large you like. Mine is 1920 by 1080. I'm going to the rounded rectangle tool. I'm going to drag out a rounded rectangle, just a small sort of shape here at the bottom of the document. Now I want to fill it and I don't want to have any strokes. I'm going to just use a black fill for now. I want a second one of these shapes. So I'm going to the selection tool and I'll hold down the Alt key on a PC. That would be the Option key on a Mac. And I'll drag a second copy of this rectangle all the way up the document. And now I'm going to shrink this one down. If I hold the Shift key, it's going to be sized in proportion. But if you don't want it sized in proportion, if you want your finishing smaller shape to be square, for example, you can just make it square. I'm actually going to make mine square. I'll select over both of these shapes and I want to line them up. So we'll go up here and choose Align to Selection. Now you also have that in the Align palette. If you open up the Align palette, you can display these additional options and make sure you have Align to Selection selected. And then we'll just choose Horizontal Align Center. So that means this shape is immediately on top of this shape. Let's select both of these shapes and let's make a blend. So I'll choose Object and then Blend, Make. What you see when you create a blend might be very different to what I'm seeing here and that's just fine. The blends won't always start out the exact same way. Having created your blend, you'll now double click on the Blend tool. Click to turn Preview on and select Specified Steps. And now you want to adjust the specified steps to get the effect that you're looking for. What I want is for my shapes to go from small to large and I'm just looking at the spacing, just making sure I'm getting something that I actually like. So I'm pretty happy with this, I'll click OK. The only thing I'm probably a little concerned about is I think the starting shape is a little big. If you discover at this point that your starting shape is a bit big, select over the entire blend and go to the Layers panel. In the Layers panel, you'll have a blend and you'll also have the two shapes and the path. So let me just size this panel up a little bit so you can see things more clearly. So we have the starting rectangle down here, the finishing rectangle up here, and this is the path, and the path here is just a straight line. So if we want to resize this shape, we'll go and target it here inside the blend with the selection tool, and now I can just make it a little smaller. And when I do the entire blend resizes, now if I want the top one to be a little smaller, I'll just target it and just shrink it a little bit. Now if having resized things, you want the actual blend to look a bit different, reselect your blend, double click here, and you can again make adjustments to it. So I think I want a few extra shapes here. So I'm happy with this as the starting point of my design. I'm just going to make the top half of this. So I'm just going to make something that looks roughly like this. So it would be easy enough to flip it to make something that looks like the bottom half. I'll select over everything and I want to expand my object. So I'll choose Object and then Blend and I'll click on Expand. And what that does is expands my blend. Let's just go back to the Layers palette and see what that gives us. 
Well, it gives us a group and inside the group are all these individual objects that go to make up this blended shape. So I want a duplicate of this. I'll go to the selection tool and I'll Alt or Option drag on this group to make a second group. So I've got a set of objects here and another one that's slightly offset from it. And this combination is going to be the pattern I'm going to extend all the way across this document. So I'll select everything here and choose Effect, Distort and Transform and then Transform. Turn Preview on. I'll increase my copies to about 20 and I'm going to start moving them horizontally until I get a repeated set of elements across the document. Now at this point I might want to decrease the number of repetitions or copies that I have across the document if I've got too many. When I'm happy with what I've got I'll click OK. I'll press Control or Command 0 to zoom back out. At this point what we have is two sets of shapes here and a repeated set of elements using a transform option. So you can see that I don't actually have all these shapes out here. They're just being created as a live effect. Well, we're going to have to break them out of this. So we'll choose object and then expand appearance. If we go back to the layers palette and to get to the layers palette, I'm just pressing the F7 function key you'll see that we now have two groups of objects. So inside those are groups again. So if I want to break them out, I'll just select each group and choose Object Ungroup. And I'll do that until everything is broken out. So that's one of the groups. And then down here is another group. So I'll select it and let's break everything out of that group as well. Just choosing Object Ungroup until Ungroup is no longer an option. Now that we've got everything ungrouped, so each of these is just an individual object, we can select everything by pressing Control or Command A and then just pop them inside a group. So now we have one group with everything in it instead of groups with groups and groups inside them. So the original design had a sort of blue background and a light or almost white pattern. So let's see how we're going to do that. I'm going to rectangle tool. I'm going to make a rectangle the size of my artboard, which I think is 2000 by 1200. And I'm going to just position this immediately over the top of the artboard so it's nice and centered over the artboard. If you're unsure, choose Align to Artboard and then choose Horizontal Align Center and Vertical Align Center to make sure that it's positioned immediately over the top of the artboard. I'm going to fill this with a color and I've already got the blue I want to use here so I'm filling it with blue. The reason why we can't see the pattern is that this rectangle is on top of everything. So I need to move it behind with Object Arrange and I'm going to choose Center Back because I want it to the back of absolutely everything. Back to the Layers panel, it's going to help us since we already have that blue in place if we lock it down because that means we can't select it and nothing's going to happen to it in the next step which is going to be to recolor and then warp this pattern. If I press Control or Command A, then I can select the entire design. I've got the fill showing here, so I'm going to fill it with a lighter color because that's the color I want to use for this design. And the final thing we need to do is to bend this. So let's select over the shape and we can bend it in one of a number of ways. I'll choose Object and then Envelope Distort. Now you can bend these designs using Make with Warp. And when you do, you get a whole series of warps that you can use. So Arc Upper might be something that you want to use. And then you can bend it more or less. And you can adjust how it bends by adjusting the horizontal and vertical amount. There are a whole heap of styles here for warps which give you an interesting effect and you might be able to customize one of these to get the sort of look that you're wanting in your design. I'm going to cancel out of here because there are other options. One of the other options is to use Make With Mesh. So again, Object, Envelope Distort, Make With Mesh. Now in this case you get to draw a mesh over the design. 
and the mesh is just a series of lines and you can use those lines to distort it. Now I'm going to use only two rows because that's going to allow me to distort it pretty quickly but I'm using four columns. You can set it up for whatever you like. Now one thing that's a bit difficult here is that the lines are showing as blue and it's a little hard to see on a blue background. So I'm just opening up my layers palette. I'm going to double click on this top layer. You can see here that the color light blue is the blue that's being used for this selection. So the envelope mesh is showing as blue. Well, if I make it orange, it's going to be a whole lot more visible. So you can change the color of the edges. It doesn't do anything to the design. It's just the edges and just makes things a little bit easier to see. So I'm going to grab this point here and just drag it. Now it's got handles on it like any other node so you can drag those handles to make the shape that you want. You can grab these and just bend them and any time you bend them and put them in a new position then the entire pattern is warped appropriately. So you can make those warped shapes by hand just using this warp mesh. You will find that if you have a lot of mesh points that it's going to take quite a bit of time to get it right. So you may find that less mesh points is going to be better than more mesh points if you like. Now just one heads up if you're working with these meshes you may want to make some changes to the pattern. For example, you may want to recolor the pattern but you can't recolor it right now because you're working on the mesh. Well up here is work on the mesh and work on the content. So if you click on edit contents, now you can get access to the actual contents and make changes to it. So if for example we said well we want a slightly more orangey color, then let's make that a slightly more orangey color so we can change the design, the pattern underneath or we can go back to editing the envelope which is this mesh shape that we're working with. So that's two of the possibilities and there is a third. So let me just wind this back and we'll have a look at the third. The third possibility is to create a shape and use that as the warp shape. So let's go back to the layers palette for a minute and let's just lock down these objects. If I lock them down I can't select them and they won't move and they're just going to be tucked away for now. Now let's go and create a shape. So I'm thinking I'm going to use a rounded rectangle for this. So let's just create a sort of rounded rectangle. I'm going to bring in this corner and let me just go to get this corner and let's bring it in leaving the bottom intact. Let's also go and get these two elements and just pull them out here and I'll grab these two and just move them as well. Grab the bottom elements and just pull them down a little bit. So basically what I'm doing is making a shape that I'm going to place the pattern inside of. So let's just zoom back out. I'm using control or command zero to zoom back out. I'm going to unlock the pattern piece and this shape but still keep that background lock because it's got nothing to do with what we're doing right now. I'll press control or command A to select absolutely everything the shape that I want to bend my pattern to is on top and that's really important. So you need the shape that you're going to use as a bending object on top. Choose Object Envelope Distort and then Make with Top Object and that bends the underlying pattern to match that top object and so things are sort of bending and folding here. So that's how you get an effect like this and you'll just need to practice with one or other of those tools to get the kind of bend that you want, the look that you want in the design that you've made. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope that you've learned things about making and bending objects here in Illustrator. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, click the notification bell and hit the subscribe button so you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.